Welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. Phil Benatti and Luke Gamble here. Tristan Adina a little later. It's part two of our two-week North Dakota football preview. And tonight, it's all about 11AA and 11B. Yeah, it should be a good season with a lot of talent coming back. Maybe a few teams poised to make some school history this year. But let's start with how things have changed in these divisions. That's right, and we start with 11AA. Not a ton of changes. The West adding St. Mary Saints and a team moving to the top level, hearkening back to the days where they played the top schools. The QFR rating will determine playoff positioning. That means every game counts now at the highest level. And 11B, a few changes up north. Botno moves up from nine man into region two. Rugby will join them there as well. Ray Powers Lake moves up from nine man to 11B in region three. We start with our team previews and let's begin with the team that came up a game shy of a fourth straight Dakota Bowl appearance, the Century Patriots. Head coach Ron Wingenbach plans on preaching the principles to his players. Good form tackling and fundamentals to one of the most consistent defenses in the state. It's the offense that will look to find a jolt this year with hopes that speed they have will lead to confusion for opposing defenses. As we well know in high school, uh, anytime you ask a defense and 16, 17, 18 year olds to communicate, sometimes that uh, doesn't always happen. And, and that's when you got to take advantage of those situations. We give the ball to the playmakers, right? So get the guys in open space that can run fast and get the guys who can hit and get them down low, you know. Last year I was a punt returner, so obviously just run to the outside, try to beat the guy and receiver, you know, just like fade routes, just beat the guy, it's one on one ball, so. Century will look to improve on their 9-2 record last year with hopes of another title in 2022. Well, let's go to the biggest rivals for the Patriots, the Bismarck Demons. And their biggest issue last year, a lack of depth as well as key injuries on the team. Bismarck won't have huge numbers again, but feel they are more equipped to handle the wear and tear of a season, moving back to an emphasis on defense and running the ball on offense. I think the one thing is the tailback is as deep as I can remember when we've Yesterday we had about five kids back there that all look pretty good, so that's a good thing. And, and so, you know, it's still got to be a combination of things. I still am a firm believer that those two things have to exist and for it to be successful, and, and you know, hopefully those things continue. I mean, that's our that's our fire this year. We're thinking about last year. We're thinking about our, our three and seven, three and eight season, whatever it was. I mean, no one no one wants to have that again. So, I mean, that's what we're working towards every single day. Until last year, the last time that Bismarck had a losing record was 1999. They hope to avoid back-to-back -back lo losing seasons for the first time since the late 80s. The team of intrigue will be the Legacy Sabres, coming as, a, as the best-rated offense in the West with over 3,000 total yards on offense. Alongside that, the roster is deep this year for the Sabres. The hope is that can translate to talent on the field. Legacy played and lost in a lot of close games last year, and the players sense they are right with the top dogs in the division. It's about growth and how they play and prepare each week. Stuff's not going to go our way, and if you make a turnover and have a bad play, you can't have that affect the rest of your game. You've got to have a short-term memory. That's another big thing is just having short-term memory. It's every, every play is a new play, and you can go make something happen each and every play. They physically matured a little bit, so and you know, hopefully they mentally mature too. So it's uh, you know, their leadership and, and things that uh, moving forward, you know, I like, I like what this group does. Yeah, I just hope it translates to the, the field on Friday nights. Legacy finished last year with a 4-6 and six record ending their season at West Fargo. They've never made a Dakota Bowl and have never won a state title. To the last Bismarck team, the one making its long-awaited return to the top division, the St. Mary Saints are back playing the big boys. That doesn't phase head coach Dan Smeaker, knowing that his players have seen these teams at the JV level over the last few years. The Saints are known for their defense, a unit that has been defined by one trait, speed. And that's why they feel they can match with any offense they face at the Class 11 AA level. Hustle, fast, everybody run, you know, I mean, Obviously thinking of what you're doing, but as long as you're doing it fast, you're doing it right. Playing it aggressively, playing it physically, and uh, you know the hustle pursuit part of the game, the defense is what we work so extremely hard on. And I think that's what, for us to be successful, you gotta have a defense that'll play fast and uh, you get a lot of guys at the football. St. Mary's finished with a record of 10 and two at 11 single A last year. Something of note, they did go three and zero against teams in 11 double A last year. The Saints go for title number 10 this season. 